What's up and welcome back to another unboxing review with Gizmo Slip Tech. So today I have for you the most highest spec, most insane gaming laptop, uh, gaming monitor. You can use it with a laptop, it's not a laptop. It's uh, not the one directly behind me, actually. This is the little brother. We're gonna be doing the big brother today, the Odyssey Neo G9. I've been using the Samsung Odyssey G9, uh, which is the monitor behind me for quite a while now. And uh, you can see it right there. It's a great monitor. And the one we're gonna be testing today is actually just like a step up uh, in terms of resolution, refresh rate, all of the above. It's insane. Um, we're talking dual 4K displays at 240 hertz, to, and it's it's such a high resolution and such a high refresh rate that you actually are going to struggle to put a display output given the current generation of technology. Now, I put 8K on the thumbnail, but it's technically dual 4K or two 4K uh, displays side by side. So it's uh, we're going to go over all the specs. And I, I wanna make sure that it is 8K horizontal, but only 2K vertical instead of 4K. Technically 8K official resolution is 8,000 by 4,000 pixels. We're talking 8,000 by 2,000 pixels, but we're also talking 240 Hertz refresh rate, which is just insane. And look at how huge this box is. This box is enormous. Uh, they had two guys, it required two guys to actually deliver this box. And it is, uh, it's, it's just crazy to me how massive uh, this monitor box is. I hope I can set this up all on my own. I, it's gonna be an adventure trying to set this up all on my own. Um, so this, let's talk about, uh, let's, 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 let's talk for a minute. Uh, there's a lot to go over, all right? There's just so much to go over with this monitor. Um, like, what do you actually need to be able to actually run the monitor at the full resolution and refresh rate? Which hardware is gonna be compatible, all of that? Uh, we're gonna talk about that in just a moment, but first, I wanna give a big shout out and thank you to Best Buy for sponsoring this episode. They actually sent the monitor over for me to test because I don't think I would buy this monitor without it being sent over because it's such a high resolution that we're gonna to struggle to run it at the maximum refresh rate and resolution. So uh, yeah, so that's gonna be part of like the testing today. What kind of refresh rate and resolution can we actually get out of HDMI 2.1 with a gaming laptop? And then what about USB-C to DisplayPort 1.4 uh, cable? What kind of resolution and refresh rate can we get with that? And it's gonna be very interesting to see what we can even do with the monitor. Anyway, so big shout out and thank you to Best Buy. I've been a big Best Buy fan for like 20 plus years, bought lots and lots of tech from Best Buy and never had an issue returning stuff. We're getting warranty coverage on the things that I bought the external warranty through. And uh, there are links in the description down below if you decide to pick up the Odyssey G9, which is the big monitor there, or the Odyssey Neo G9, which is the ultra high resolution refresh rate. Um, so yeah. Uh, what time do I mostly go live? Usually around four, uh, Casita. So, okay, let's talk specs. So right now this is $500 off on a discount. Um, so $19.99, normally priced at $24.99. It's a 57 inch monitor. So huge monitor, almost five feet across. The monitor that I have next, that's all, currently on the desk is only a 49 inch, this G9. Oh, this is actually the OLED version. I don't have the OLED version, I don't believe. I don't think this is the OLED version. Yeah, I don't have the OLED version behind me. Um, this, so I actually have the wrong link right there pulled up, but yeah, so this, this Odyssey Neo G9 is bigger than the Odyssey G9, which is only a 49 inch. We've got a one, millisecond response time as you know, of course, rated by the manufacturer. So probably technically when it's actually click to pixel uh, response time is gonna be longer than that. HDR 1000 with a curved gaming monitor. We have HDMI 2.1, DisplayPort 2.1, USB 3.0. And realistically, like, right, if you're gonna actually try to run this monitor at the full refresh rate and resolution, you need DisplayPort 2.1 support which is not even supported on the highest end hardware. Like the very highest end hardware with the RTX 4090 only has DisplayPort 1.4 
A right now. So that means that uh, if you want to be able to run this monitor at the highest refresh rate and resolution, you actually are gonna need to get one of the Radeon GPU is one of the highest ends, I believe the 7900 or the 7800 XTX or whatever, those the, the, the highest end Radeons will have DisplayPort 2.1 support. And I'm assuming the NVIDIA RTX 5000 GPUs will have DisplayPort 2.1 support as well. Um, so given that we don't have the highest end uh, monitor outputs on our laptops or on our desktops even right now, what we're probably looking at is either the full resolution by 60 Hertz or the full resolution by 120 Hertz. I don't think we're gonna get to the 240 Hertz today in our testing, but uh, we'll find out. I have both a USB-C to DisplayPort 1.4 cable, as well as an HDMI 2.1 cable, plus whatever cables the uh, monitor actually comes with in the box. So we're gonna be doing some side-by-side -side comparisons with the Odyssey Neo G9 versus the Odyssey G9. And you can see the full list of things we're gonna be testing. We're gonna be testing game performance in the ultra high resolution uh, as well, because you know when you think about how uh, high of resolution this is, with upscaling support, I think a laptop would actually be able to put out decent frame rates in a lot of games, like the Blade 18 with Thunderbolt 5 should be able to support the full 8K 240 hertz refresh rate and everything on this monitor. So that's probably gonna be the first laptop for 2024 that's gonna come out with the full support for the full 8K 240 hertz refresh rate. And in, in the vast majority of esports games, I'm pretty sure you're gonna be able to get really high frame rates because most of those are CPU bound, even at 4K resolution. So going to the, I don't know, some, some of them like Apex Legends, are gonna still be GPU bound. You know, so you're probably looking at like 120, maybe 100. I don't even know how many FPS. That's what I, it's, it's a huge gray area, right? You go play Valorant though, or Counter-Strike 2, I'm pretty sure you're gonna be able to get very high refresh rate, reframe rates, um, even at the old, the old, whole dual 4K, ultra high resolution um, and everything. So very interesting. Okay, let's check chat. Uh, 75 said, yo, Brandon, what's up, mate, from Asus ROG Live back. Nice. Welcome back. wonder how much that monitor costs in EU. Not sure. Lincoln says, well, I do. My neck would hurt by looking to the left and the right in my apartment, LOL. Well, yeah, the part of the, part of the idea of this monitor is that it's so high resolution that you scale everything. You can, the idea is that you don't make everything really tiny, so you have to look at close. The idea is you can sit a little further back and you scale everything up, but it just the detail is gonna be super, super good on a monitor that this high, that's this high of a resolution. Now, I would invite everyone, if you enjoy this type of content, gaming monitors, gaming tech, gaming laptops, the main focus, of course, we're gonna be using the monitor today with gaming laptops. Um, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and come back for more. So without further ado, let's talk detailed spec overview on the Odyssey 57 Neo. Now the, and, and I wanna mention like kind of the three, the three monitors that are, I guess, competitive and we'll, I'll have links in the description to all three um, here in a moment. Uh, but uh, so the, there is an OLED version of the lap of this of this monitor. All right, you've got and that's a forty nine inch, and then you've got the regular Odyssey Neo G nine. This is interesting. So I think this looks like the one that I have on the desk behind me right here. So the OLED version costs $100 more than the one I have on the desk behind me. This is the one I have on the desk behind me. It's a QHD, so 5120 by 1440p resolution is the one behind me. And this is probably the one I would get if you have a current gen 2023 Thunderbolt 4 support uh, or HDMI 2.1 support. You're gonna be able to at least get 120 hertz at that QHD resolution with a USB-C to display port. Um, out, which is going to be very good, obviously, experience. But I don't even know if you're going to be able to do the full 240 hertz at QHD, or dual, you know, dual QHD. Um, so that's what well, we're going to be testing things out today. All right. So 
Yeah. All right. So let's talk uh, this Neo G9 Dual. So 240 hertz at this high of a refresh rate is unheard of. All right. 240 hertz at 7680 by 2160 resolution is just insane. Um, you know, and it, like I said, you need DisplayPort 2.1 to be able to actually output at this full resolution. And the only GPU currently supporting that is going to be the Radeon, uh, the highest end Radeon GPUs. And, um, and the sad part is the RTX 4090 is just way more powerful than those Radeon GPUs. So the frame rate you actually get with those Radeon GPUs is just not going to be as good. So probably the most ideal scenario is using the RTX 5000 series whenever it comes out with this monitor. Um, but in the meantime, you can still do, I believe, the AK resolution with 120 hertz or maybe a 60 hertz refresh rate while you wait for the technology to catch up to the mon monitor technology, which is just insane. So we have a 32 by nine aspect ratio, um, which means we basically have two 16 by nine displays side by side. This has a 420 candela per square meter brightness, um, which is going to be like, I believe it's sustained brightness. Of course, this is HDR 1000, VESA certified. So that means that when you have a lot of dark uh, images on the display that, and you have very smaller, brighter areas, those can go up to 1000 nits brightness, which is just going to be super bright and super uh, vibrant as well. I believe this is 100% DCI-P3 color gamut. Let's see. So 140 PPI, which is very high for a desktop monitor. Uh, it claims a one millisecond gray to gray response time. And uh, let me move my, let me move, I'll just scoot this over for right now so you can see all of this. AMD FreeSync uh, is included. So you should be able to get basically, uh, you know, prevent screen tearing with both a uh, Radeon and a NVIDIA GPU. Um, there is core sync and core lighting, which is interesting. So you should be able to like use external lights uh, to like light up your room to match the monitor, uh, the colors on the monitor. It comes with an ergonomic stand that lets you swivel, tilt and adjust the height of the monitor. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's a 1000 R curved screen. So that gives you a lot of curvature around the display, which kind of gives you more of like a, almost like you're using like a, a VR display. It's like very surround. It like goes into your peripheral vision, which is great for first person shooters or adventure games. When you want to see all of the enemies around you, you can pick up that movement in your side eye and, and really see everything around you. So um, I've really enjoyed using my Samsung Odyssey uh, G Neo G9 from 2023, I guess. I'm not sure. It's interesting that they're both called the Odyssey Neo G9. Uh, but uh, yeah, they're both named exactly the same. It's just different resolution, essentially. So, all right. Shall we get into the unboxing process? This thing's going to be... This thing's going to be big. Did I ever find the spider? No. We looked for my Spider 5 Elite for like... A half hour last night and another hour today. We look everywhere. I'm gonna have to buy another one, I think. Um, so, so yeah. Uh, Gizmo is cool. He also noticed our conversation and explained it. Love this channel. Um, all right. Let's do this. Uh, so, this monitor, it's so big, it's gonna be hard to fit this on the, in the live stream. I'm gonna grab a pair of scissors real quick. Actually, I should be able to just use this to uh, cut the tape. So I wanna get on the other side of this so you can see a bit better. Wow. So that's how it's packed. I'll tilt the box up so you can kind of see it. All right, so we got our stand here, which we can go ahead and 
take off. And I'm just going to throw everything kind of on the ground behind me here. So this has two screws on the stand, which is very interesting because it's such a, I'm sure it's a heavy monitor and a big monitor. Um, we've got our screw thing that goes on the back. This helps, uh, whoa. this basically mounts into the back and you screw it onto the back to uh, lock in the monitor. All right, here is the Here is the, what do you want to call it? The arm that goes up from the base and holds the monitor up. It's quite heavy duty. It feels like there's a lot of metal in it. Uh, let's pull that out. So this goes into the base right here, kind of like that. And then it holds the monitor up. All right. Wow. All right, so this is the plastic cover that goes on the back of the monitor. Once you get all your cables plugged in, this goes on the back. Probably the last thing you put in on the monitor itself. Wow, this monitor is just huge. All right, so here's the cables that are included. Let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so first up we have a USB A 3.0. This is gonna basically plug into our USB hub on the, on the monitor itself. We've got our display port to display port 2.1 cable. And I'm assuming you're probably gonna to wanna to make sure you get the, a 2.1 supported display port cable if you don't use this cable that it comes with. We have our power cable. All right, and we have our HDMI 2.1. Now, I'm not expecting the full resolution and refresh rate to work with HDMI 2.1, but I think theoretically you should be able to get 8K 60 Hertz working, I think, with HDMI 2.1. We'll find out. Uh, but those are the four cables it comes with. All right, we have the quick setup guide here. Let's see here. I think you unfold this. It's like a poster size setup guide. All right, so when you pick up the monitor, be sure to pick it up with two hands, uh, one on each side on the far side. Do not pick it up from the top. Don't pick it up from the stand. Don't pick it up from one side of the stand. Don't set the monitor up only partially covered on the stand. <sighs> yeah. All right. And don't take off the film on the monitor itself. It's supposed to be on there. Don't take it off. Very important. Okay. Um... So looking at tidying up the cables, you plug the things, uh, you know, your HDMI power cables, all that into the back. Then you can put those cables into the little uh, receiver arm that goes down and out the back of the little support arm. So there is cable management built into the monitor itself. Here's some read below about connecting the product. All right. Yep, 
Yep. All right. I mean, there's pretty much saying plug in HDMI. It's plug in HDMI is basically what that says. Um, then we have our function key. This looks like it's going to be located in the, the, the front middle of the laptop itself. Um, just probably behind or underneath the bottom um, of the middle of the, lab, of the, not the laptop, but of the monitor. Okay, there's no actual assembly instructions on this. So let's see if there's an assembly instructions portion. There's your regulatory regulatory compliance stuff, um, safety instructions in lots of different languages. What's this? Our commitment as a global corporate citizen, our sustainability efforts are guided by strong environmental principles. As such, Samsung monitors are developed with the goal of minimizing environmental impact in line with the California uh, emissions, uh, California appliance efficiency regulations. So, yeah, basically making sure that it doesn't burn too much energy. I don't see any I don't see any instructions on how to put it together. Got warranty information here. One year parts and labor. On the warranty, so you have a one year warranty on it. Um, of course, you could get an additional warranty through Best Buy if you decide to go down that route. Okay, here's the setup guide. Let me bring the mic a little bit closer and let me check chat in case there's anything else. The Digital Digest has got this in November, best display on the market. Yeah, that's, it's the best display, but yeah, I don't know. Okay, so looking at the installation setup, it looks like we need to get everything out of the box. And it looks like we even... I'm not sure exactly what that is telling us to do yet, but we definitely need to plug all the cables in while it's still inside the box. We do our cable management. We put the little white thing on the back after we put the cables in. Then we insert the arm that goes in the back support. We screw in the little arm support so it doesn't come out at all. Then we attach the stand to the, to the arm. And then is there, and then it's recommending tilting the box up and holding the cables out. And you have a second person <laughs> to help room it. So it recommends two people to actually take it, this, uh, this whole thing apart or, or to put it together. I mean, um, take it out of the box and then you use two people to hold it and lift it up and put it on the table. So when we get to this final end part, I'm going to see if Carla can help me do it. I don't know if she'll be able to or not. If not, I'll probably manage on my own. All right. So. Here is the enormous box. Um, I never saw this as part of the instructions. What is this? I'm not sure. I'll have to check the instructions again. All right. Let's lift this up. 
This foam is huge. <laughs> this monitor is insane. Look at how big it is. It's so much bigger than the, the other one. Like, that's how big that one is. That's how big that one is. And this one's, I mean, it is uh, eight inches larger across diagonally. But I mean, it's, <laughs> it's actually gonna be a lot more in terms of size. Maybe the instructions were telling us to get rid of this. Um, plastic wrap. I think that's what that instruction was telling us to do. Reviewing the instruction manual again. Interesting. All right. So next step is definitely, I gotta get rid of all this packaging. And there is a fair bit Hi. It's so much. You guys love hearing, um, <laughs> do you love hearing the plastic wrap noise? <sighs> oh my. This is such a big monitor. Honestly, this is bigger than I expected it was gonna be. I don't know what it's gonna be like when we actually get it put on the stand. Okay, and uh, all right, so power cable is next. All right. So power cable just goes right into here. All right. Putting the cables to the middle there. Um, now I've got I guess this is where I need to show you I mean, I kind of, I, I have shown you this before, but let me show you again in this live stream. So right now I'm trying to get this, I'm just getting this plugged in real quick. There we go, okay. This monitor, right now this monitor, the Samsung Neo G9, which is the QA dual, dual QHD display. The monitor I've been using for the last um, about a year or so, it's running in 5120 by 1440p, 120 hertz. And I can show you that uh, I'm connected right now through USB-C to DisplayPort 1.4. And this monitor, as far as I can tell, this cable that I have is limited. I feel like the cable I have should be able to go to 5120 by 1440, 240 hertz, but right now it's limited to 120 hertz. So I don't know what it's going to take to actually get this one to hook up to a laptop to do 240 hertz, but I've got two more types of USB-C to DisplayPort adapters that I've bought. I'm waiting for them to come in. But this might be, 
I don't know. <laughs> if we're only getting this resolution at 120 hertz with this monitor, with a gaming laptop, then going to the 8K dual native is going to be even ch more challenging, right? So, <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and continue the Big Mama Jama unboxing so we can get these two monitors side by side. Um, so that means I need to unplug this cable for now. Because I need to be able to plug this USB-C to display port 1.4 cable in the back over here. Wow, there is quite an array of cables, in, uh, cable plugins on the back of this monitor. Let me actually show you. We're going to go handheld. All right, so let's take this, we'll go down in here. So you can see we've got quite the, the setup here. We got HDMI one, two, three. We got a headphone cable that can daisy chain a headphone um, to your headset. We've got, uh, US, we got two USB A inputs and then two USB-A outputs. Then we've got a display port. We only have one display port, which is very interesting. So we're gonna have an HDMI, and then we're gonna have a display port. Those are the two cables we'll be plugging in for our, basically for our monitor. All right, beautiful. Let me plug this back. Here. Sorry about that, the mic. All right, so we have two cables there. We have our power and our display port to USB-C. And then we're gonna grab our HDMI cable here. There's our HDMI cable. Now the instructions tell us to take our armband. There's a warning here on the, uh, the arm. It says not to grab it. Don't grab the monitor by the arm. We'll take that warning off. We've got, we got screws in here that all have tape on them. You know, the, you know, the idea here, of course, is that these screws want to stay in here. They don't come loose. Um, there's kind of some threading right here on the, there's some threading right here built into the metal piece. And notice that there's a little connector here. This is, you want to make sure you, you put this in and then put it, in, uh, put it forward and then you screw down the screws. And that's really what's gonna lock us in um, overall. So let me scoot this over to the right. All right. Um, let's see here. So next we need to, we're basically gonna put, I mean, I can zoom in a little bit. All right. We're going to scoot this in just like that. And then we'll need to take our screwdriver, which I used to cut open the box. 
and then I put the screwdriver somewhere. There it is. So we got four screws. We got four screws we're gonna to need to put in. So the nice ratcheting screwdriver making this a lot easier. There's one. Let's do the opposite corner screw next. Let's do this screw next. Thankfully, the screws are going in no problem very easily. locked in now. I'm just going to tighten each screw a little bit more to make sure that it's really locked in. Not too tight, but you know, just like snug. There's not really any reason to over tighten because you may need to take this back apart. Um, but there we go. All right, now um, Oh, you know what, we missed one step. We were supposed to put the uh, white piece back on before we put the arm on, but I think we'll be able to do it just fine. So you plug the cables in, then you put this white piece on. All right. So you can see this white piece goes just like this, and you want the cables to come up above this, just like that. Just pops in nicely. You gotta get both sides in first, I believe. There we go. So you wanna make sure the cables go all the way to the middle there. Popped in good enough. Okay, so that's good. All right, now for our cable management, what do we got to do? Looks like you don't worry about the cable management until after you set it up and pull it down. I would have thought cable management would be easier to do now, but... I 
I could be wrong. Looks like this cable right here might actually be partially for the cable management side of things. Let's just do that right now. Um, okay, and next up, here is the manual again. All right, so we have We've taken everything apart. We've put the cables in. Uh, we've put the little plastic piece on the back. We have attached this. Interesting. And uh, we screwed it in. Now we need to attach our now we need to attach our actual uh, angular base to the bottom and then we'll need to attach the black ring to the back of the monitor as well. So let's go ahead and do the base. All right, so base is next. Let's zoom out. Alright, so this base just goes right in here, and we've got finger tighteners for this. Um, probably want to make sure both get the screw started. First, let's see here, yeah, like that I think. The front one is not acting like it's screwed on straight. Try to reseat it. I don't know. The back one's going in real easy. The front one. Kind of going in rough. It's going in though. We'll probably want to use the uh, screwdriver as well. For any final tightening. All right. Let me change my screwdriver head size kind of stripping the screw a little bit. There we go. There we go. That's really locked in there now. Those are fully tight. All right. Uh, let's see here. Next up is the black piece. So this black piece is kind of interesting. It uh, this goes onto the back of the monitor, and uh, it kind of snaps together. You see that? So you actually put this on like that, I think, and then you screw it down onto the back of the monitor, and that'll lock in your tilt and rotation of the monitor. You know, I think, I think this black piece is for wall mounting it. This black piece is for, I think for wall mounting, I'm not sure. Very interesting. All right, so. This is gonna go down here. And let me look at the instructions one more time. So 
you can see right here, you take it apart, you clasp it down and around. I think I need to, not sure exactly where it goes on the back here. It looks like it goes on a little further back. No, that's correct. It looks like it's in there. And it's snapped in there, nice and tight. All right, excellent. All right, so now you're ready to tilt. Now we're ready to tilt this monitor up with the help of a second person, hopefully. Um, and then lift it up and put it on the desk. So let me see if I can get Carla to help or not. Carla, do you think you could help me tilt the monitor for a second? And set it on the desk? This is kind of a two-person thing. You can be mostly out of the camera. Okay, so let's back the camera up. So Carla, can you uh, just grab this? And you'll be polishing this downwards and I'll lift the box up. Okay. So you, you hold the stand. Oh. I'll show you the, I'll show you what they say. <laughs> so this is, uh, this is my wife, Carla. Okay, so you see how it's like that? Mm -hmm. One person tilts the box, the other person manages the cables mm -hmm. and makes sure the stand goes down to the ground. Okay. And then we'll lift it onto the table like that. Let's try. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna... Go Okay. Are you ready? Ready. Okay, here we go. Tilting, tilting. Isn't it huge? Wow. Oh my. <laughs> it's a behemoth. Okay. <laughs> I'm kind of trapped back here now. Uh, let me get over here. We got the monitor out. All right. Whew. There it is. It's a huge freaking monitor. Um. All right, now I'm going to reposition the other monitor we have over here. So we can set these two side by side. All right. Uh, okay. We're going to do this with one person. I'll put it to this camera view for right now. And uh, I'll tilt this over just a little bit more. <laughs> All right. So for this, I'm going to grab the monitor on each side from the bottom and lift it up and set it on the desk. Wow.
<laughs> it is so much bigger than the other one. Look at that thing. It's huge. It's, it makes the other one look small. <laughs> uh. <laughs> okay, so let's get them both uh, hooked up, I guess. Or at least hooked up enough. I at least want them to hopefully be side by side. <laughs> So you can see the comparison in terms of size. Without this monitor falling off, that would be the best. Definitely would prefer that. All right. That is so huge. Um, okay, let's switch camera angles to this one. <sighs> See, now that would be a monitor experience, wouldn't it? <laughs> Just <laughs> set them both up. <laughs> NVIDIA surround like this. Oh my gosh. Uh, so it's 4K times two. Yeah, it's two. It's two uh, two 4K panels side by side in this one, and this one is two QHD panels side by side in this one. They're both a thousand nits brightness HDR 1000 displays with uh, 240 hertz refresh rate. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and move the camera back. And I'm gonna need to pull this box out of the room. The box is huge. So let me do that. It's like a puzzle game, trying to get everything out of here. So that's your that's your side by side in terms of sizing, and um, yeah, wow, it's huge. We're going to unplug this guy, and I guess we'll put this on the floor for now. So we can just utilize this big mama jama. This is such a huge display, it's crazy. Um, all right. So. We got our SCAR 18 there, we got our, so we're gonna, we're gonna use the SCAR 18 right here uh, for our laptop to power the, the, the monitor. And for our performance testing as well. Okay. We are plugged in. Grab the mic. 
So I gotta get the SCAR 18 operational here. It appears to uh, have locked up. I'm gonna restart the SCAR 18. All right. Now, it looks like there is a little plastic film part of this, like covering, it's like covering, it's covering just the external bits. You can probably take that off. All right. So let's see if we can, can we turn the power on? Power is on. Um, now we need to plug in the display. It's on HDMI. Uh, let's go to source, display port for our source. Looking at our display settings here. It is, there we go. All right, so we're going to do show only on display two, which is gonna be the external monitor. And we're gonna to try to adjust our resolution. So we do have 120 Hertz selected right now, but here's the resolution. So we can go all the way to, let me go ahead and zoom in here. So we can go all the way to 7680 by 2160. And there it is. We got the official resolution. Let's see what refresh rate we're at. 120 hertz, 8K 120 hertz with the USB-C to DisplayPort 1.4. So we are getting a fast high refresh rate. I'm actually impressed that we're able to pull that off. Look at that giant freaking monitor. Eight, 8K 120 hertz with a laptop. How about that? <laughs> that is too freaking sick. Um, so that's just being powered with the SCAR 18. Now let's go ahead and get into some benchmark testing with the games. We're gonna redo the set of benchmarks. <laughs> the mother of all monitored, it's crazy. Still 8-bit, but if you use USB to see DisplayPort HDR, you get at least 10-bit. Interesting. Yeah, if you want... <laughs> If you want the full 8K 240Hz experience, you're gonna to need to buy the Blade 18 2024 version with Thunderbolt 5 support or whatever the next uh, gen laptops that have Thunderbolt 5. So I, I'm not sure, I think we're gonna do kind of like that probably for our testing. Something like that at least. And I actually set up a second I set up a second tripod for the for the other camera to be used on my face, because otherwise I'll be facing away from the camera the whole time. So let's go ahead and take this guy off. And let's see, this is gonna be hard to route this camera. Let's see. Okay. Coming down here. We might have to unplug and replug this camera. Woo. Hello, camera. 
All right, actually, you're going to have to go the other way. Like this. Yes. 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 All right. So far, so good. All right. Oh, yes. I think it'll just barely reach. <laughs> Beautiful. All right, so this camera is gonna be for the side of my head, I guess. <laughs> wow, you guys are getting the full, the full messy room experience in today's live stream. Uh, let's see, and we're gonna to need to grab this and extend it out. Okay, uh, and let me grab my phone here so I can see chat while we're at it. Okay, beautiful. Okay. Holy smokes. Okay, so just looking at this monitor is a enlightening moment because it is huge. Um, it is an enormous monitor. And um, wow, it's gonna be so immersive to play with it. Maybe even to the point where it's a bit too large. I don't know, we'll find out. Um, let's get after crate, uh, armory crate here and let's, Scoot this over a little bit more. All right, so I think the stream can see this. We're gonna go to manual mode. We're gonna crank the fans up to the highest performance settings. All right, so 8K 120 Hertz for our display output, which is exactly what I was hoping that we were gonna get. Um, we're going to go into Apex Legends to start with and see what kind of frame rate. I don't, I don't know what kind of frame rate we're going to get. Time to test how good a laptop 4090 is at ultra, ultra high resolution. Oh my goodness. Okay, so we need to adjust the resolution of probably almost all the games. I hope that this resolution is going to be supported. There we go. We had to go to borderless window mode. <laughs> okay, so... Uh... <laughs> This thing is massive. It's huge. Um, let me get one of the lights so I can light my face. All right, and wow, it is so detailed. Like on the Pathfinder, all the little details on the Pathfinder are just fully like no pixels. I cannot see any pixels at all it's just such high resolution um let's try firing range how can you play with that monitor it's so huge that's what she said oh my goodness all right so looking at our fps 
All right, our FPS at 8K, 8K dual. I don't know what, I only call it 8K, but it's technically, you know, uh, half of 8K because, you know, 8K is 8K by 4K. 8K by 2K is what we have here. Um, so let me make our FPS graph bar text, whatever you want to call it, bigger. Um, wow, the, it's hard to keep track of where the mouse is located. There we go. All right, and here we go. And I don't know what we're gonna set this to. Let's go 24 text size. Can you guys see that now better? Let's see, how's the stream look? Is that big enough? Probably needs to be a little bigger still. Uh, let's go 36. Okay, that's too big. Let's try 28. That's still too big. Try 26. What happened to our text display? Ah! I guess I'm gonna try reopening Riva, statistic server. It like crashed on us, I think. What? Okay. Let me try closing Afterburner and Reva. We could also try scaling this with Windows scaling settings. So this is one of the things, if you're gonna go with an ultra high resolution display, some of Windows, um, some Windows, displays are just gonna like some applications are just gonna kind of wig out on you a little bit let's try 175 for our adaptation let's go afterburner let's reopen it let's get some sound here we're gonna need to redirect our audio to go through the speakers. All right, so Afterburner is still freaking out. Let's go ahead and um, we're gonna need to exit Apex, I think. Let's reopen Apex Legends. My hair dryer is more quiet. Well, it's not that bad. <laughs> Ultra performance DLSS was made for this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kinda, cause you're still gonna be running, you're still gonna be rendering reasonably high resolution if you do an ultra performance DLSS. You know, when you think about it, it's, wow, this is such a vibrant, great looking display. The Buster Sword. I haven't tried this yet. It's a melee heirloom that can be equipped with any legend. Interesting. So our overlay is still not great. Let's go to uh, Afterburner. Let's go uh, 1000. Is that going to help us out? Nope, let's go down to 20. Okay, so 20 got us back into uh, rendering capable. All right, let's just get into a game now. We are ready to try out a game.
So right now, keep in mind that our, the monitor is only technically 120 hertz refresh rate. So if we're hitting close to 120 FPS, then I will be happy. Okay, we got our Pathfinder. This is good. The display is looking good. Very minimal ghosting so far. Um, it's only, you know, 60 hertz being rendered right now, but that's because we're in the menu or whatever, like the, the character selection. 125 FPS right there. Right now in this scene. Okay, here we go. I've got a new average going. Our goal is 120 FPS and we are, for video settings, we're on all low. We probably don't need, oh my gosh, it's so detailed. <laughs> It is, it is like huge. I kind of want to take another like foot, another foot back uh, because it's such a huge display right now. Oh my, uh, let me see here. Can I zoom in just a little bit more? All right, we got one kill, let's go. Oh. shot by a couple people top and bottom this is playing pretty good though like considering the resolution i mean i would rather have 240 hertz if i could for a competitive game but this is still like very very playable excellent uh overall feel to this Too many people, I was in a bad position. So looking at our Jeep, we're very, very GPU bound right now, if you couldn't tell. I'm just, I'm kind of shocked that we're able to do a, a 110 FPS on average in Apex Legends. With a laptop, right? I mean, at, at dual 4K resol resolution. That's my teammate. Hello, well. Oh. No. Yes. <laughs> the guy EMP'd the other guy too, so that wouldn't have working out. Man, I did like 88 flesh to that guy. I'm starting to get the feel of this monitor. It's feeling a lot more natural to me now. There's a lot to get used to. It's such a big, it's such a big monitor. Like it's so immersive, but at the same time, it's, it's quite large, you know? Oh, 
Oh! <laughs> Man is living all virgin's dream right now, what? <laughs> I'd say this is a uh, every man's dream, including, uh, you know, people who are sexually experienced and those who are not. It's an incredible display. Oh. Oh, I got the Prowler legendary somehow. I don't know how. Let's go! Yes! Let's reload. Come on, team. No! Our 1% low is 74, 110 for our average. It's a good ratio of, of FPS average to 1% low, but. Yeah, we mailed him. Come on. I love, I love when you get a melee in gun game because it puts them back uh, one gun level to a previous level. Right now my team only needs two more kills. I think. Oh, no. Never mind. My, my team is oh, way behind. Well, someone else is going to win first place. <laughs> I, got eight, I got eight kills, though. All right, we'll finish out this game because we're so close and we'll move on to the next game. Oh my god, I hate this gun so much. Ah. <laughs> the EVA 8 is such a bad gun. Nine kills, 2,000 damage so far this match. Pretty dang good. That's the team in the lead. Oh, okay, well, it was a good match. 110 FPS on average, 73 for a 1% low. Um, I think I ended up 10 kills that round. I feel pretty good about that, all things considered. Let's move into our next game, which I cannot remember. I think, is it Pal World, I think, is our next game? Let's go, Pal World time. Wildfire says, I feel this way about 4090s too, like the baseline and medium of gaming is so good now that the top end just doesn't feel worth the expense for some extra FPS. I mean, it depends on what resolution you're trying to go for, right? If you're trying to go for... If you're trying to go for a uh, okay, if you're trying to go for QHD or you know lower gaming, then then yeah, you probably don't need the highest end hardware. Obviously, uh, if you're trying to go for um, ultra settings, it depends on the game too. Because some games you really do want the highest end. All right, so, whoa. <laughs> Power world is pretty intense. Um, so let's see what our settings are. 
Graphics are on all epic with DLSS on quality. Um, can you see that? All right, our settings right there. All epic, DLSS on quality. Let's see how it plays. It's so dark right now. It's nighttime. So I just refreshed our FPS average. 56 FPS, 24 for our 1% low is pretty good. LOL, when we talk to this guy, it tilts our camera too low. We can't see the character's head. It's a widescreen problem. Also, we're pretty, we're pretty zoomed in. We can't see our character's feet. Let's go to the graphics setting. Let's make it a wider field of view. Uh, it's a little bit better. All right, uh, let's go to, let's try, we don't really need DLSS on quality. Let's try putting DLSS down to uh, performance. I did not save it. Wow, it still looks crisp. All right, so now we're getting 75 FPS, 69 for a 1% low. All right, Gumos, help me beat this Who Crates. Oh, he, the, the Who Crates. Oh, there's two of them going after me now. That's not fair. We're gonna die. I threw my Pokeball before I di uh, died, so let's see if we capture him. Nope, we did not capture him. <laughs> so, very playable though, 72 FPS on epic settings. Let's try, uh, we'll go to, let me go to the fireplace here so I stop eating this cold damage. Um, and, uh, let's go to our options, graphics. Let's try low settings and see what we get. Uh, we'll do low for everything except textures. All right. Now we're getting 99 FPS, low settings, 80, our 1% low is looking very good. I kind of want it to come daytime. Uh, all right, so we need to make a weapon so we can capture some pals better. Let's grab some wood. All right, we're gonna need to make a primitive bench. And I'm not sure how many pieces of wood we need to make a club, but let's get a club. Let's make that club. One hundred and nine FPS on average right now. Make another pal sphere. Let's see if we can catch this. Uh, let's see if we can catch this chickpea. Oh, we didn't grab the pal sphere. Hold on. Yeah. 
<laughs> okay, so I mean, look at us, 120. We're actually hitting the max FPS right now here in POW world. I mean, low settings actually still look pretty good in this game. It doesn't look too big of a difference. 109 FPS on average. Let's build one more of these and let's make, uh, we can't make any more stone. We need more stone. We'll catch one more pal and then we'll move on to our next game. But extremely playable. Uh, let's go back to the epic settings. So 68 FPS. I mean, it looks it looks smoother when we were doing like a hundred something. But this is still, this is still actually playable with a laptop. We'll make a couple pals. A couple pal spheres. Let's go whack this lamb. Oh, we killed it. <laughs> Whoops. Let's go see if we can capture these chickens. Well, we leveled up. We're level four now. I'd say the only issue with playing this wide of screen is that it's uh, it ends up being a little zoomed in because you can't see your character's feet, which would be what you normally would be able to see. But this is obviously very playable. That's just a widescreen issue. That'll be the case on every widescreen. Um, so 69 FPS, one on epic settings, over 100 FPS on low settings. That's awesome. Let's move on to our next game. Uh, let's just do this. It's here, Counter-Strike 2 next. See if we can get 120 FPS with Counter-Strike 2. <laughs> Is Power World kind of like Pokemon? Uh, it's very much like Pokemon. It's like Pokemon. Uh, they call it Pokemon with guns. Oh, wow. We need to change the resolution. <laughs> it's so wide. Uh, can we? What? Oh, they don't let you. They don't let you play ultra wide in Counter Strike 2. I don't think. What's the highest resolution this will let me play? Thirty two by eighteen hundred. What? So this is a Counter-Strike 2 competitive issue. They don't let you play ultra high resolution, ultra wide, because it's gonna not be fair for other players. Uh, so that's what they say. You have to be 16 by 10, 16 by nine, or four to three. So there's not much point in testing Counter-Strike 2 further, cause yeah, there's not much point. Let's move into Cyberpunk 2077. All right. Bunch of noobs. What's up with that? <laughs> yeah. Why no Thunderbolt in such monitor? Well, Thunderbolt is actually not high enough resolution to handle the full 
FPS. And basically Thunderbolt 4 utilizes DisplayPort 1.4 technology basically, and that's what we're using here. So Cyberpunk is also in the incorrect re resolution. So we're gonna have to try to get it to see if it can do the 8K ultra wide. I'm just gonna call this resolution 8K ultra wide or 8, 8K dual, dual 4K or 8K. All right, can we change the resolution? We can. Very nice, full screen, ray tracing ultra, DLSS on performance. Let's do that. So ray tracing ultra, DLSS on performance, 8K wide with dual, dual 4K. Let's do it. Would you get the full resolution out of the ROG 4K 240 Hertz if it isn't ultra wide? Um, yeah, you should be able to get the full. So yeah, you should be able to still run like 4K 16 by 10, but you need to set your default monitor. Um, you would basically need to set the monitor to 4K centered in Counter-Strike to probably get the best experience. So. So we're at 44, 45 FPS right here in 8K, <laughs> 8K ultra wide. Um, 45 is gonna actually be playable. Like it looks smooth, but you're probably gonna wanna go to a, a lower setting. We have ray tracing and it's on ultra and we're at the full resolution with upscaling with performance upscaling though it looks good though like i think you probably want to up i think you probably want to make it like balanced probably without ray tracing is probably what i'd recommend like the little details around the fibers and stuff would probably look better so 45 fps for 8k performance dlss do we have do we have frame gen enabled yeah we had frame gen enabled too so let's go, we'll go ultra settings, no ray tracing with DLSS on quality. Let's just try that. All right, let's see what that does for us. So this is like, this is the kind of sacrifices you have to make if you wanna play at this resolution probably to play smoothly, like hopefully it gives us a nice frame rate bump here. Interesting, so DLSS going to quality actually hurt us more than adding ray tracing. Isn't that interesting? 39 FPS right now. This monitor is such high resolution. Thirty nine FPS. We're hitting our we're hitting really high into our TDP. Ninety nine percent GPU utilization, one hundred and seventy watts of power. Let's see what it takes to actually get this thing to be really playable. Like, can we hit 120 FPS or not? I don't think, I, I, don't, I don't know that we'll be able to, honestly. Let's try performance with ultra settings. So we're, we're, we are at DLSS on performance with ultra settings, no ray tracing for this benchmark run. So 60 FPS now on ultra settings, DLSS on performance.
So it becomes playable. Like, this becomes very playable. But at the same time, it's not like ultra sharp anymore. You know, like every like with when you go DLSS this low, uh, down to performance, it kind of gets to be a little bit grainy looking in the little details. You know, if you're gonna go for this higher resolution, I feel like you probably would want to just set things to lower settings. And try to go for higher FPS on a little bit lower resolution or low, lower, lower, better quality upscaling, I guess. Go to like balanced, maybe. So let's try. So we got 56 FPS on that setting. Again, no ray tracing. Let's go to balanced. But. Uh, Balanced and low settings, all right? Balanced with low settings. Let's try that out. I'm hoping we can hit the 120 hertz refresh rate on Cyberpunk with these settings. This is what I'm, I'm fingers crossed and hoping for. I don't know. At least a high re higher refresh rate experience 90 FPS is really what I would want ideally to play Cyberpunk. Doesn't look like we're going to quite hit 90, but the image looks a lot more crisp now around the little details. And wow, it is so detailed. Like looking at the little details on the characters, on the bottles back here, like the high resolution is extremely, <laughs> it's just very, very high resolution. Even with DLSS Unbalanced, it, it, lo it looks really crisp. Eighty-three FPS, seventy for our one percent low. It looking very smooth, very nice. Um, but again, this is the low settings, so you're gonna the shadows, you know, are gonna, gonna they're gonna look a little clumpy here. Um, so you're like. This is where you're going to have to fiddle with the settings to get, you know, the exact frame rate you want with whatever, like, shadowing and extra special effects. Um, let's just see if we go to, we're on low. Let's go low with ultra performance. Can we hit the refresh rate with that? 120 FPS, low ultra performance for our render resolution. I wonder what that is actually rendering at. Systems Reality says, do path tracing with no upscaling or frame gen. Oh my, that would be, that would be rough. Okay, so now we're doing 106 FPS in Cyberpunk, low settings, 8K, uh, 8K widescreen. But the problem with DLSS on ultra performance is now we're getting a lot of kind of like a smeared look on the fine details that, I mean, balanced mode didn't look at all smeared, you know? Um, so this is, this is where the RTX 5000 series GPU comes in eventually uh, for both laptops and desktops and eventually we'll make it like, and Thunderbolt 5 as well. And then you'd be able to play at higher level settings. This is, a, this is a situation where the monitor is outscaling our potential GPU performance, basically. Um, obviously, still playable frame rates at reasonable settings. You know, we're getting, what, like around 56 FPS on ultra settings with, with DLSS, I think on, what was it, performance or something? So, if you're gonna play Cyberpunk, with this monitor, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to decide where you want it. All right, for just for giggles, we're gonna go to ray tracing overdrive with this path, which is path tracing. We're gonna go no DLSS, no frame generation. This is gonna be the worst case scenario. Let's see how we do. All right, we're gonna bring. We're gonna bring this laptop RTX 4090 to its knees 
and uh, I think we're going to get probably less than 20 FPS. Maybe even 10. Did we crash Cyberpunk? Because I don't think it's loading. I think we crashed. <laughs> I, we literally have zero FPS right now. It's such a high resolution. <laughs> oh my. Okay. Yeah, we crashed it. Uh, we'll have to restart Cyberpunk. <laughs> That's too funny. All right, we'll try one more time. See if we can get it to run the benchmark. If it crashes again, then we'll just move on to the next game. We got a good idea of the performance you can expect in Cyberpunk on this monitor with a laptop 4090 at least. Interesting. It seems like something's messed up now. Like something's being buggy with Cyberpunk um, with this resolution. I don't know. I think we I think we broke Cyberpunk. It's too high. Our VRAM is completely ran out. Maybe that's why it's trying to use, it's trying to use our VRAM. We're 15.7 gigs of VRAM utilization. Um, that's my guess is that we ran into a VRAM limitation. <laughs> okay, so we're just gonna move on to our next game. <laughs> All right, we're gonna do, uh, let's try God of War. <laughs> Grab the fire extinguisher. <laughs> LOL. You paid for the whole VRAM, so you used the whole VRAM. That's right. We are using 100% of the VRAM. Now, God of War, I think with DLSS on... I think DLSS on a lower level DLSS, we should still be able to get playable frame rates, but let's see. We're venturing into unknown frame rates for laptops right now. First time I've ever seen this resolution tested on any laptop, so. All right, so uh, DLSS is on quality. We're doing 8K ultra wide. Let's see, our graphics are on ultra. Let's see what we get. I mean, Oh, okay. Yeah, it's not on the right, it's not on the right aspect ratio. Okay, so with, with, uh, with God of War, it can only go to 21 by nine aspect ratio. So there's no ultra, ultra wide support with God of War. So this is gonna be the highest resolution that we can do which is basically like one and a half 16 by nine. So 21 by nine aspect ratio. The rendered resolution is 3360 by 1440p being upscaled to something like 5,000 by 1800 or so. I, I uh, obviously we're doing, it's being upscaled to the 2160, but though it's not the full width. All right, so this is still gonna be a great gaming experience. And wow, our FPS in God of War is really good still. So 70 FPS, 42 for our 1% low, 47 now for our 1% low. It's very good, very playable. We just got black bars on the sides is all. What did you find? 
because it can't go to the ultra wide aspect ratio. And I remember playing God of War on my other Samsung Odyssey, and there's just no the devs didn't incorporate ultra ultra wide. It's like it's like ultra wide but not ultra ultra wide support. So 74 FPS, 42 for our one percent low. And the details on the axe look really just super crisp and the armor, the foliage, everything. This looks like a great overall gaming experience with a laptop 4090 on ultra settings too and DLSS on quality. That's awesome. Um, I mean, I don't even feel compelled to really try anything, but we could try it. We could try original. With original graphics quality, 104 FPS, 66 for our 1% low. Goodness, this is really good. 106 on average, 84. So we're talking about super playable frame rates. Very good gaming experience in God of War. Let's try out Dead Space. <laughs> Let's see if Dead Space can handle ultra wide or not. Systems Reality says, sorry, I broke your game. Yeah, you did. Parky says, all the other benefits of a premium built laptop, all around good and aspect ratio, plus a 4K competitive 165 hertz IPS display and Thunderbolt 5 support. How is the speaker? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't think the onboard speakers are going to be very good. Um, I didn't hear any speaker output actually going through the Odyssey. I'm pretty sure when you select the Odyssey high resolution audio, it actually just puts it to the headphones, I, I think. Yeah, because there's no audio coming through to the Samsung through the Samsung Odyssey. Maybe there's a way to do it, but um, right now I'm just using the laptop speakers, basically. Okay, going back into Dead Space. Let's see if we can get the right resolution set. Uh, nope, we don't want to exit. Let's go to the settings, display, video options. We can do the full resolution. Let's go. Apply. How's our VRAM? Our VRAM, 9.6 gigs utilized right now. DLSS on quality. Ultra graphic settings. Oh my goodness. All right, so we're looking at 45 FPS right now. Well, we'll try doing a benchmark at this resolution. I mean, it looks like it's gonna actually be pretty playable, but I would want more than 45 FPS in this game. Having scary things pop out at you would not be fun with, with only 45 FPS. I'd really, I'd probably want at least 60. Our 1% low is only 24. Dead space frame time graph is always wacky. 100% GPU utilization. We're finally not CPU bound in this game. It only took the 8K widescreen resolution to achieve that. But, well, we had a big stutter there. All right, so ultra settings with DLSS on quality. Let's see what we get. Dual 4K, 8K wide resolution. 46 FPS is still playable technically. I mean, I'm impressed that we're even in the playable range because we're ultra settings with DLSS on quality. Right, so this is a very high resolution being rendered right now.
I love that we have the full widescreen support as well on this uh, on this game. All right, so there it is, 47 FPS, 25 for our 1% low. Let's see what it takes to get us into, like, I don't know, at least 60 plus, but hopefully let's see if we can go to... Uh, Let's see if we can get into the yeah, 60 plus range. All right, 67 FPS. Just by changing DLSS, nothing else. If we go to DLSS on ultra performance, What do we get on ultra performance? We're looking at 70s, 80s for our FPS. It says 22 for our 1% low, but it looks so smooth and fluid. I don't understand how our 1% low, I think our frame time graph is not accurate or something because it feels way smoother than 22 or 19 for a 1% low. You know, it's surprising how clear this looks too. It looks surprisingly clear for DLSS on ultra performance. And that's just because it's such a high resolution. Um, that said, I think I would rather try downing some settings. Let's go to low settings. Let's see if we don't crash the game. All right, and we'll try going to quality. Low settings, quality DLSS, here we go. We're looking at 57 FPS. So we, we only gained 10 FPS going from ultra settings to low settings. There's not that much FPS gains. Interesting, very interesting. Oh my. Such a demanding resolution. Let's see here. Let's just go. Let's try performance on low settings. Okay, so this is probably the way I would play this game. Performance DLSS still looks really crisp overall on like the details. And our FPS is now in the 70s to 80s, uh, which is going to be, it's going to be great. It's going to be great to play on these settings. So again, we're on low. Maybe we go high or, I don't know, let's see what high looks like. I definitely would want 60 plus FPS. Okay. 68 FPS on high. That seems that seems like a great compromise. 70 FPS. And we're on DLSS on performance, right? So 8K DLSS performance, high graphics. Very playable game. Very very playable. All right, let's uh, let's try Hogwarts Legacy. Hogwarts Legacy, being a game that supports DLSS, frame gen, and ray tracing. Let's see if it can do ultra wide support, though. I don't know. Chat, what do you think right now? What are your thoughts on this monitor? Is it something you would get? Is it too insane of resolution and rendering requirements? Is it just better to play on a non-wide screen? Or maybe to go with the Odyssey G9? 
It's lower resolution, less less demanding requirements. I feel like the Odyssey G9 fits the laptop requirements a bit better, but if you just love ultra high resolution, I'm thinking this might be the monitor to get if you're just after, if you're the kind of person that just loves ultra high resolution um, and lots of details and a monitor that, I mean, this is basically the last monitor you would need to buy for a long time. Like there will not be worthwhile upgrades to monitors. I don't know for just, it's going to take forever. I think for a monitor to actually get to the point where it's a lot better. Um, right now we're on low textures and we're doing 12 gigs of our VRAM on low medium textures. I don't know. Let's see if medium does. We are playing at ultra wide, but I'm noticing the UI is kind of shifted over to the right. Like it's like, it's like the center of the monitor over. Okay. The UI looks correct now. Um, okay. So, all right, just to refresh, we're at the AK ultra wide already DLSS on quality frame generation is enabled and it's uncapped ultra settings right now with medium textures and doing 13.8 gigs of VRAM ray tracing is enabled. That's probably the first thing I would disable. So running through here, whoa, we're getting some big stutters. Oh my. I think we ran into our VRAM cap again. Look at, look at the, the display right now. Hey, we just crashed Hogwarts. VRAM limitations. I'm telling you, VRAM, I think we're mainly crashing because we're like the game wants more VRAM to load in textures for this ultra high resolution. So to fix this, we either need to increase our upscaling, so lower our rendered resolution or down our rendered textures down to low probably to make this work. Parky says, I think this monitor is amazing for what it is, but my personal opinion, I go for ROG dual mode 4K, 240 hertz, or full HD 480 hertz. Interesting. Interesting, Parky. I've not just, I've not tried that monitor out. That would be an interesting monitor to try. What uh, what size is that monitor? Is that like a is that like a desktop monitor? Like a 27 inch or, or 30 inch or something. You know, you just, just, I just want to mention you're going to need, you're for sure going to need a huge desk if you're going to want to get this monitor. All right. All right. We're going to just, we're going to go to DLSS on balanced. First change we're going to make, and we're going to also set our textures back to low again. We already maxed. We already maxed our VRAM out. Just loading into the game once. E. Come on, Hogwarts Legacy, you can do this. If we crashed Hogwarts Legacy again. <laughs> oh my. We're loading it. We're loading it again. You know, me changing the settings uh, mid, mid loading in for the first time, it, it's, it's probably wanting to shuffle in and out textures that are just so big that it crashes it. You know, like this is like a brand new use case for this technology. Like a laptop 4090 probably was not really 
engineered or designed from a software engineering or hardware perspective to go to this high of resolution. So, um, you know, the drivers may have never been tested on this high of a resolution with a laptop 4090. Uh, literally never. Like, so this, like, I don't know. I hope NVIDIA does. But like the devs, for example, of each of these games probably don't have a monitor, a $2,500 monitor like this to like do their testing with to make sure it's compatible and doesn't crash. So we're literally doing like the, the testing for the devs in a sense. Um, very interesting. What's up, Dragon Sarge? 27, uh, 27 inch, that's a good inch range, I think. Okay, so did it save my, so we are DLSS on balance now. We're only 10.1 gigs of VRAM use. Let's just try to load in and see if we can get a playable frame rate or not. The next thing I'm gonna disable if we crash again is going to be ray tracing. Okay, so it looks like it's playable, but the frame gen effect right now, I can, you know, when we turn the screen quickly, I can kind of see a little haze from the generated frames. All right, let's go ahead and run through. Let's see if we're in a playable frame rate range before we make any adjustments. 49 FPS is pretty good actually. So like it is in a playable frame rate, but not your ideal, you know, like, oh yeah, this is so smooth, buttery smooth, just what you want, you know, like, like it's good, but yeah, and uh, so we're gonna try. Just to, let's just try turning off frame gen and see what happens. One change at a time, okay? So no frame gen. We went from 48 FPS. Now we're doing 28, 26, 25, 24. Wow, frame gen really doubled our FPS, almost from 28 to 48. So frame gen is pretty important. Next, we're going to disable ray tracing. Let's turn frame gen back on. And we're going to go no ray tracing. Okay, now we're now we're hitting smooth playable frames. This looks way better. And it's looking way more crispy, crispy, delicious. This would be a good gaming experience. Over 60 FPS, 40 for our 1% low. Um, you know, with frame gen, we're really wanting to hit like 90 if we can, but this is definitely crisp enough to where like, oh, I could play this. This would be a good experience, you know? Um, of course, no more we no longer have, um, we no longer have ray tracing enabled. Let's try low settings. And this, changing all the settings, I don't know how much this is gonna help us out. Uh, okay, so here we are, Hogwarts, low settings, Full resolution, but upscaled with DLSS on balance. Things are looking crisp. The details are looking good. Um, and the, the frame rate is looking very smooth now. So that said, I think let's just see. Let's see what we let's do a little quick benchmark run. We're looking at 8K resolution, DLSS balanced with upscaling. Frame generation enabled, low settings, no ray tracing, 81 FPS, 56 for our 1% low. And this is now looking crisp, high enough refresh rate to where I could say, oh yeah, this is an excellent experience. Um, and I mean, the game still looks good, but it's not, it's, it's, I, it's the point where I'm like, this is not, your ideal visual fidelity experience. I feel like you are giving up maybe 
a little too much on the visuals side of things. So let's try, let's try medium settings. Maybe medium settings will look better. Because low settings do look a little bit on the crappier side of things. Yeah, medium settings, I would say, do look better. And we're still getting great frame rate. 77, 55. Very smooth experience. Responsive. I could play this game on this resolution monitor. This would be a good this would be a good experience overall with no like major visual fidelity loss. You're like you're not doing ultra ultra settings. You're gonna have to wait for the next generation of GPUs, probably. But like this looks crisp on like on my character, on this character, you know? Like the things in the background look good. The textures look high enough. I mean, this looks a little like that. I probably would really want a desktop 4090 where you could put the textures to back to ultra again because you have 24 gigs of VRAM. But a, a desktop 3090 would also work with 24 gigs of VRAM. I'm just trying to skip through this. Man, I love this game. I really enjoyed Hogwarts Legacy playing through it. I wish I could play through it again fresh, you know? Like, give me 10 years, I'll forget all about it, and I'll just play through again. <laughs> Brand new, fresh, fresh playthrough. Okay, so Hogwarts Legacy, extremely playable on um, non-ultra settings. You wanna go for something like in the medium, maybe high settings, let's try high. Okay, high settings, still playable, above 60. 1% lows are in the 30s. It just looks a bit choppier. It's not looking like the super smooth gameplay experience that we had on medium. But this is also Hogsmeade, which is the most demanding area of Hogwarts. So, But yeah, I'd probably play this on medium settings. Maybe a mixture of medium and high. Boom. Okay, so there's Hogwarts fully tested. Let's try out Starfield next. Starfield time. And then we've got Witcher 3. And we'll try Shadow of the Tomb Raider as well. Is this with a 12700HX and 4090? This is with a laptop i9-14900HX and a laptop 4090. If you were to undervolt the scar, would it improve the frame rate on the monitor severely? Um, yeah, if you were to overclock the 4090, you could get like 10% more FPS almost for sure. Um, okay. So this is saying it's only 1280 by 720. That is definitely not true. Um... Let's try just loading in and seeing what it renders if it's wide or if it's the menu or what's going on here. It looks like it might be black bars in this game. Okay, so this is similar to God of War where we have the black bars on each side right now. I don't know if we're going to be able to fix that or not. Yeah, so it looks like 21 by 9 is going to be the high, highest refresh rate or the highest um, settings we're going to be able to do here. Um, right now we're on ultra settings, 
DLSS on quality, frame generation on. The game looks gorgeous, but we got the black bars on the side. That's a downside. Again, it comes down to dev support, developer support. Let's see what we get with ultra settings, DLSS, quality, frame gen, enabled. So 74, 73 FPS, things are looking good. The details around uh, all the objects are immaculate. All that you can really read the little text on the objects and the, like the textures here and everything on the, uh, the buildings are truly excellent. 70 FPS, 45 for our 1% low. Um, and this is basically ultra wide 4K, but 21 by nine. I don't know what technical, technically that resolution is, but it's only like two thirds of our potential render resolution. And uh, let's see what kind of FPS we can get if we do more upscaling. So let's go to performance upscaling instead. So going to performance mode, we're not getting a huge FPS bump, only 78 FPS. It didn't really scale up very well. Let's try our low settings. Our, for our custom presets, we're gonna go to low. We're gonna go DLSS on quality with low settings. Let's try that out. So that'll look crisp but with low post-processing post effects and everything. Interesting. That did not seem to have improved our FPS much, almost at all. Uh, okay, so let's try ultra performance with low. All right, ultra performance low, but with the high resolution. So we're doing a lot of upscaling right now. This is basically the lowest settings with the most upscaling possible. I'm gonna wait for my oxygen here to regen, my stamina to regen. All right, so 100 FPS right now, 98, 94, 92, so coming down. I gotta say, low settings does not look as good graphically on the fidelity side of things. Uh, like the detail on the textures in particular look meh. We only have seven gigs of VRAM utilized, so you definitely could keep textures at a higher settings. I'm also seeing a little pop in and outs because of DLSS being on ultra performance. Yeah, I don't think I would run this, but we are getting a high FPS frame rate experience here. 94, 67, very smooth, very good for aiming. Keep in mind, right, Aquila here is the most demanding city, pretty much one of the most demanding areas in the whole game. So, I mean, you go out into space, you go to another area of space, it's going to it's gonna look and play way better. Oh, we didn't have frame gen on. Let's try frame, doing frame gen on ultra performance with low settings. Low. DLSS. Frame gen on. There we go. All right. What's our FPS like now? Really? Frame gen didn't help us that much? Interesting. I would have thought that frame gen would have helped boost our FPS a lot more. Let's just sit here for a second. So we're mid 90s with frame gen. Let's go frame gen off. Oh, that's why. We're on ultra performance. Okay. So 115 FPS with frame gen. 
with frame gen off, now we're doing 99. So we only get 18 FPS with frame gen, not a huge difference because the ultra high resolution frame gen just doesn't scale as well. Um, probably could just leave frame gen off then if you wanted to, but um, yeah. So if I was to do Starfield, I'd probably do something like high settings, DLSS on balanced with frame generation enabled. I think something like this is gonna get us above 60, well into the 80s and look really, really crisp and really, really good. So we're into the 80s right now. We're starting a little benchmark run test. So we're running Basically, this is like a 6K resolution with DLSS on balance. So all the details are looking really good and fine with no artifacting pretty much on the display. On high settings, 79 FPS, 44 for our 1% lows. Looking good. That's playable. Um, so Starfield absolutely can hit a playable frame rate. Let's do Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Does it have widescreen support? I don't know. Let's find out. Uh, Parky says, I noticed when you were running Dead Space, the CPU temps were actually improved a little bit from last time. Uh, yeah, that's because when we're running at a lower resolution, then it actually... Um, let's try highest. When you're running at a, a lower resolution, the game becomes more CPU dependent. And it slams the CPU really, really hard. So we are doing Ray Tracing Ultra, highest possible settings in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Let's see if we have a playable frame rate in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This is a legacy game that's a few years old now. Um, I don't anticipate it to be a uh, too hard to run, but then again, maybe we can't do the full ultra wide. I don't know, maybe... Because right now we're seeing, I'm seeing black bars again. It's showing us on the full resolution. We're on maxed out. We're on maxed out settings with ray tracing. So let's see what we get for performance. I don't know. I think, I think this is one of the downsides of the, going with the ultra ultra wide monitor, is that a lot of the games simply cannot actually play the ultra ultra wide resolution. Actually, Shadow of the Tomb Raider can. No black bars. We're getting full support. It's just the menu that's 21. Uh, and our frame right now, we're at 99% GPU utilization, 173 watts of power, 56 on our average, 33 for our 1% low. Juicy. That's going to be playable, but again, I really try to target more in the like, 80, 90 FPS range if I can. But this is with ray tracing on, so pretty sure if you just flip ray tracing off, we should be sitting, we should be sitting pretty on the frame rate, I think, at max resolution. Um, does this even have DLSS support? I think this is, I think this is running true native. Wait, no, we are, we do have DLSS. We're DLSS on quality. DLSS on quality, pretty sure. And ray tracing enabled. I mean, it looks super crisp. The details in the grass, the textures, the little leaf details here. It looks so good. Let me try zooming in with the uh, this, this monitor camera. I mean, just look at those details. This monitor is so immersive, super, super immersive. Let's go ahead and we'll zoom in a little bit more. So it looks like we're gonna average around the 60-ish FPS mark 
with maxed out settings, DLSS on quality, ray tracing enabled. This is with a laptop 4090. <laughs> I'm actually kind of blown away that we're able to go to this high resolution with these highest settings and still get a playable frame rate. Um, you know, like this looks super playable. You could, you know, most gamers play a game like this around 60 FPS, no problem, and be very happy with it. Like I said, I'd probably want at least 90. But if you're okay with 60 FPS in a AAA game like this, then uh, this is going to be great. So let's see our benchmark results. We ended up with an average of 58 FPS. Excellent. Uh, let's see if we can turn ray tracing to off. All right, so we're gonna use native uh, shadowing and see what kind of FPS we get, all right? So we're gonna do, this should give us a much better idea of what we can get out of this. Peepon says, I love this game so much. Yeah, I actually, this is one of the games I've not actually played almost at all, all the way through or anything. 76 FPS with a laptop 4090, 8K resolution, 8K widescreen, I'm going to call it, uh, like dual, dual 4K resolution. Absolutely incredible. So, I mean, this is the way I would play the game right here. This is plenty enough FPS. It looks super smooth. Our 1% low is over 60 FPS now. Turning off ray tracing boosts our 1% low quite nice, quite nicely. Our frame time graph is just rock solid steady. So that means it's going to be perceptively extremely smooth. Has anyone else played Shadow of the Tomb Raider? This is one of the games that... Uh, I've wanted to play through. I don't know. I probably only played it for like two or three hours. And the storyline felt good, but it didn't grab me or I got distracted playing another game or something. I don't know. I should give this game another try, though. But right now I'm playing Pal World. I'm, I'm, I'm going to at least get to max level in Pal World before I switch to another game. So right here, we're going to see the max possible FPS 105 <laughs> looking up towards the sky or like a, a mountain, you know, getting 105 FPS. So good. So interesting, our GPU boost clock here, not, um, not over 2K. We're only 1920, high 1800s. That's interesting. Uh, you know, typically speaking, I would normally expect the boost clock when it's being maxed out to be like closer to 2000 to 2100. You know, 21, like 2050 to 2100. Um, I don't know. Makes, makes me wonder, like, I guess the boost clock doesn't go as high when you're going with ultra high resolution is my guess. Something like that. Man, this game would be great to play on this monitor. It would be just like you're almost your whole vision. Almost your whole vision is going to be just like all gameplay, like almost my entire visual field is the game um makes makes triple a games like this incredibly immersive averaging 77 fps on ultra settings at this super high resolution 76 80 by 2160 love it all right let's go to the witcher 3 
Equilibrium says, LOL, I played it on NVIDIA Titan, the first one that came back, back in 2013 with an i7 4820K, LOL. So I'm hoping Witcher 3 is also going to be very playable um, and have widescreen support. I have a bit of worry that it's, since it's an older-ish game, it might not have the widescreen support. Let's find out. Okay, display. We got it. All right, we can do, I think we'll be able to do the full resolution. Yes. Okay, so we're at 7680 by 2160. And we have frame generation enabled. We have, uh, we'll do ray tracing on ultra enabled to start with, and then we'll try disabling it. Parky says, so if you want a higher end resolution monitor like this, you actually to actually use a high resolution with a high refresh rate, you need a Thunderbolt 5 in the laptop you're connecting to it. Um, yeah, so if you wanted to uh, do, well, if you, I mean, maybe we could try doing the 4K 240 hertz. Let's see if we can do that um, as well. That'd be a great thing to test. Oh, wow. It is really demanding, The Witcher 3, and we are doing the full resolution widescreen. There's no black bars here, so we got the full widescreen support. We're only at 30, 39 to 40 FPS, and we're getting some load-in stutters. We are maxed on our VRAM. We got 16 gigs of VRAM utilized. Um, so most likely, almost for sure, we're going to either want to down our DLSS or... Another option is going to be reducing our texture quality to say high. It is, it's loading in all those new textures. 15.8 gigs of texture utilization. Yeah, you're probably gonna wanna down the I'm tempted just to run this as it is, but uh, let's try medium. Well, let's just, let's try low textures and just see if that, see what that does for us. Our VRAM, even on low textures, okay, it's coming down 15.7 gigs of VRAM utilized now. Seems like our FPS actually went down lower when we turned down the textures, which is super weird. I don't know why that is. So The Witcher 3, one of my favorite games. I really hope I can get this to work well on here. Um, probably can. We just got to get it set correctly. Uh, all right, so let's go back to Ultra Textures. <laughs> We're gonna to go to ultra textures and we're gonna do DLSS on a lower level if we can. Our goal is probably DLSS on like performance. All right, so we just changed, it's gonna to have to basically reload all of the graphical settings or at least a whole new render resolution. I don't know. Can it crash? I just want it to not crash as it reloads everything. All right, so uh, I'm going to quit to main menu and just let it reload everything.
because <laughs> I, th I think changing all those graphic settings when it's such a high resolution, a lot of the game engines didn't like it. We crashed our game. We crashed like three different games, um, changing all the graphic settings while the game was running. So, Okay. That's way better. Look at us. We're in the 50 FPS range now. All right. And we have got ray tracing enabled. And we're in the 50 FPS range. All right. So let's go to just double check our settings. Ray tracing enabled. DLSS on performance. Everything else is on ultra. So the only thing we changed was DLSS on performance. Frame generation enabled. You know, when frame generation is enabled like this, I really prefer to get into the 80s and 90 FPS range, but. All right, let's go. Here we go. So if we had DLSS on quality, basically what we'd be looking at is uh, probably a lot more stuttering going on because our VRAM is now at 15 gigs, which means we're not we're not running into our VRAM cap, having DLSS on performance mode. So it's pretty much requirement, I think, to put DLSS to performance uh, or your textures way down and reload in. I'm not sure which is the best way necessarily, but either you gotta upscale more or you gotta lower your textures, one of the two. Um, looks like we're gonna do 50. 3 FPS, 43, so that's playable. We're in a playable gameplay here, but with frame gen and we move the camera around, we get kind of a haze with the in-between AI generated frames. Let's try turning off frame gen. Uh, so disable frame gen, let's see what happens. All right. Uh, so 40 FPS, the game looks better, I think, but it's not quite smooth enough for my taste. Let's disable ray tracing next and see if, how much FPS that gives us. Okay, we're into the 60 FPS range, disabling ray tracing. Everything else is on ultra. DLSS on performance. Um... We're very close to our VRAM limit at 15.4 gigs of VRAM. But at least we're above 60 FPS now. Uh, let's see here. Let's try changing our settings down to say medium. Well, let's just go, let's go straight to low with uh, We'll just leave, we'll leave DLSS on performance for a little, a pseudo apples to apples comparison. So DLSS performance settings are on low. Richard three still looks really good on low settings. And now we're in the 70 FPS range. All right. So Let's try DLSS on quality and see what happens. Or at least let's try balance visually. Like I'm just noticing on performance mode, like some jaggies, you know, like a little artifacting going on around like the leaves and stuff um, that is like visually like noticing that's like, eh, it's not that great looking. Um, so that's why I'm kind of wanting to do like DLSS, like balance mode seems to be doing a lot better. Okay, let's try high. DLSS balance mode on high. Oh man, FPS is 36, not good enough. Let's go medium. Fifty-three. 
medium. Again, I'd want more FPS if I can. Let's go to display. Let's turn frame generation back on. Did we crash the game? I think we crashed the, oh, no. We're back again. But frame gen appears to have actually made it slightly worse at FPS. Okay, I think it's just the game is finishing loading in. All right, so we're in the 60 FPS range now with frame gen. Interesting. It's hard to get this game to be tweaked perfect. My guess, if you really want to play at the full resolution, what you're looking at is DLSS balanced low settings. Let's try turning off SAO. Let's turn off motion blur. Bloom, depth of field, vignetting. All right, everything else is set to low. All right, everything is on low, 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 low. Now with DLSS on balanced. All right. Now we're talking high FPS. This is this is a great gaming experience, but now we don't have all the fancy visual effects that make the game look particularly delicious. So that's the that's the trade-off right now if you're de dealing with a laptop 4090. If you got a desktop 4090, you could probably crank um, all those extra settings on and you know it would look a lot better or maybe be able to keep it on DLSS on quality because we have more VRAM, for example. So low DLSS balanced, we're getting to the 90 FPS range, which is where I'd want to be playing this game. It looks good. It looks good. It plays good, uh, but it just doesn't look quite as delicious as when you have all those settings turned up. That's the downside of going to such a high resolution. It's ultra high resolution. Okay, so um, let's let's we're done with the testing for now. Let's try. We don't have Flight Sim installed. Sorry, Clark. Uh, Wagner says try HDR. This monitor would be great in a virtual cockpit type game. Yeah, it would be very good for that kind of a game. Um, so let me go ahead and switch to this monitor and let's switch this to be behind me. Beautiful. And let's grab this and we'll just set this up here for right now. Okay, so the Samsung. Let me just change the fan mode here so it doesn't make as much noise in the background. Let's talk about all of the little pros and cons here about this laptop. Um, okay, cool. Uh, and I'll, I'll happily answer any questions you have as well right now in chat. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, so, Samsung Odyssey Neo G9. Absolutely an insane monitor. Um, one other question we had, the chat I know wanted to have answered is, can we do 4K 240 hertz if we just set it to uh, just 4K? Let's see. Um, so this monitor, let's set it to just 4K. So it's just centered 4K right now. And let's see, 120 hertz is our limit, at least with this cable, even at just 4K, even though it's half the data, which kind of sucks. Um, if you had maybe a full display port connector with a, you know, a... Um, If you had a full DisplayPort connector with a desktop, maybe you'd have other options there. 
Uh, I don't, I'm not sure. Obviously, if you had DisplayPort 2.1, you could do 4K 240 hertz centered up like that. And that's one way to um, have flexibility with this monitor is that you can just render just the middle portion of the monitor and it'll look great. It'll play great. Uh, like if you're doing esports games like Counter-Strike, Apex Legends, you don't want to do ultra wide for that type of game or something or whatever. You just want to do the ultra wide for your productivity or for AAA titles like Hogwarts or something. There are options with this monitor to treat it more like a traditional large 16 by nine monitor. Um, so it's just, it's kind of a bummer that you can't do 240 Hertz at 4k. Let's see, can we do 2560 by 1440 and then do 240 Hertz? No, we cannot. So even, even going down to a, it's just this display port cable, I think. Kind of limits your flexibility, not being able to go to 240 hertz at all, no matter, even if you lower the resolution, but um, that's, that's just, a, I, I, think, I think it's just a cable limitation. Um, obviously the monitor could do that if you get the right cable connection. Display port 2.1, you could definitely do 240 hertz 4K or 240 hertz 8K wide, you know, two 4K side by side. Uh, 240 hertz with DisplayPort 2.1. So um, let's talk. It's so bright. This laptop, this this display is such a bright display. It like kind of blows out the background when I have it on all white like that. So, so what's up? And welcome to my final summary review of the Samsung Odyssey Neo G9. Now, Side by side with the Samsung Odyssey Neo G9 that's dual QHD and it's a 49 inch, this is a much bigger monitor. It is noticeably larger in the display. It's more immersive when you're sitting there using it. But at the same time, if you get dizzy easily, you might run into problems having it be such a large screen experience, I think. And in that scenario, you could probably change the monitor down to 21 by nine aspect ratio. You could lower the resolution to be just be centered. So it's a 16 by nine gaming experience. Um, in terms of productivity, this monitor is as good as it gets because you got two side by side uh, 4K displays pretty much. And I love the fact that our laptop, we have a SCAR 18 that we did all the testing with today. Our laptop can do 4K on you know dual 4K, which is like the 8K, so 8,000 by 2,000 pixels. You know you got that you got that ultra high resolution, and it's 120 hertz refresh rate with our laptop. Now, if you want to go to the the full resolution 240 hertz experience, you got to get DisplayPort 2.1, which is currently only supported on the highest end Radeon GPUs. I have no idea why Nvidia did not think ahead and put DisplayPort 2.1 on all of the laptop GPUs from like the 3080, 3090, 4080, 4090, all of those in my opinion should have DisplayPort 2.1. It's a huge mistake from Nvidia not to include that. And we need to tell Nvidia, we need to demand say, hey, you got to put DisplayPort 2.1 on all that stuff. Now, the thing about laptops is we don't have any ports that are DisplayPort 2.1 on any laptops either. What we have is USB-C DisplayPort 1.4, which is what we were using to use the 8 by 2K, 8K by 2K, 120 hertz. So I was using a display, USB-C to DisplayPort cable that plugs right into my laptop, the SCAR 18 right there. Um, it's not actually mine, it's the review unit from Asus. And they, um, Basically, it's easy to set up and plug in. You just gotta get the right cable. It needs to be a high quality USB-C to DisplayPort 1.4. If you have a lower quality cable, it's not gonna work. Literally, uh, you might not get the full 120 hertz 8K experience, and then you might be stuck with 60 hertz or worse. So cable quality matters. HDMI 2.1 also is not gonna give you the full 120 hertz experience. It, at most, I think it would give you a 60 hertz experience at the 8K resolution, 8K by 2K. So cable matters, connection matters, and I'm hoping, right? Like we know for sure that Thunderbolt 5 is coming to the Blade 18 and at CES, we actually saw three 4K monitors running at basically 12K by 2K resolution 
at CES from one port. So we know that Thunderbolt 5 will definitely support this monitor. Uh, I think it should definitely support it at the 8K 240 hertz refresh rate. And that's so that's really what we're looking for. This is like, in my opinion, if you buy this monitor, you're future proofed for until the monitor breaks. Like pretty much. Because what what kind of monitor are you gonna get upgraded from this, right? It's a thousand nits peak brightness, 240 hertz refresh rate, perfect for esports. It's ultra high resolution, as high a resolution as they come. Like there's almost no point in upgrading beyond this ever again, I think. I mean, right? Why would you wanna upgrade beyond this? Quite frankly, this is this is like this display technology with DisplayPort 2.1, it's beyond what our current graphics cards can really push ultra high frame rates to. Um, you know, if you're gonna get this monitor, you realistically, many esports games will probably be able to go over 100 FPS, no problem. We saw Apex Legends, which is a more demanding esports title, doing like 110 FPS on average. It was still very playable. It's not your ultra high frame rate experience, but when we have our current display technology, we have, we're capped at 120 Hertz refresh rate anyway. Um, so basically this monitor, in my opinion, is the kind of monitor that you can grow with and you can continually upgrade your graphics card to, and you'll have a great overall, uh, you know, gaming experience for the next 10, 20 years, as long as the monitor stays functional and stays working. So, um, I think this is the monitor I'm going to be upgrading to. I think I'm going to keep it. There's no point in keeping the Odyssey G9 that I have, the Neo G9 that's a dual QHD monitor. That said, if you don't want to spend the extra money, I think the Odyssey Neo G9 that's a dual QHD display is still a great choice. And quite frankly, it matches our current gen laptop and desktop hardware a bit better. And I know for sure that DisplayPort 1.4a that my RTX 4090 desktop had could do the dual QHD at 240 hertz refresh rate. So that is, in my opinion, a bit more ideal when you're dealing with you know, esports gaming. Um, <clears throat> that said, I, you know, whenever the, the next RTX 5000 series does come out, I'm going to upgrade to the 5000 series, right? Like there's, there's no reason not to for me. Like, so I'm going to get that 5090 or 5080 or whatever GPU I'm going to end up buying. And I'm gonna put that in my desktop and I'm upgrade that. And that better have DisplayPort 2.1. I, there's no guarantee that it will, but I, I think for sure Nvidia will do that. Cause now we have monitors that absolutely require it, um, for the first time ever. So love it. I love the monitors, uh, brightness, color gamut, the picture quality looks super saturated, looks super good. Um, the productivity of having dual 4K displays is awesome. The dual QHD display is also awesome. And I don't think there's anything wrong with going for the Samsung Odyssey dual QHD version. And like I said, I think it matches our current gen of hardware a bit better than this 8K. So this is a monitor I view as more something that you grow into as we get better and better GPUs to come out and it's obviously gonna be great for productivity because you got the 120 Hertz dual 4K. That's gonna be great for productivity. It's gonna be great for seeing all the details in your games. But at the same time, having the dual 4K display is gonna make it like, you're gonna have to fiddle with your game settings again. Like, like when you're playing uh, on the SCAR 18, the Blade 18 at QHD resolution, you can basically slam ultra settings, maxed out everything all the time in every game and you never have a problem. But when you're dealing with this, this high of resolution, this high of a, of a Hertz refresh rate, you're gonna be going to like, okay, how do I get the best blend of visual image and smoothness again? Uh, Cause now you're dealing with such a high resolution. So. Um, let me go ahead and take a look at chat and see if you have any questions, uh, before we end this overall, I really like the monitor in so many ways, but at the same time, I'm just like, why is it, why, why don't we have display port 2.1 support in the current laptops or in the desktop GPUs? Okay. So Diane Fox wants to know which laptop did you use? It's a laptop RTX 4090 in a SCAR 18 2024. <clears throat> Britt Allen's helping 
answer questions. Uh, sometimes the game just freezes for many seconds and we never know why. Driver bug or something, that's correct. Um, do you like glossy or matte finish for monitors? I like both. Both glossy and matte can be great. Depending on the monitor type, um, when I'm doing, when, in a laptop, I usually prefer matte because of reflections off of bright objects in certain environments, like you're at the airport or you're taking your laptop around. Um, when I'm dealing with a monitor on a desk like this, uh, I think glossy can look great because you also don't usually have reflections unless you have the monitor in a bright room. I guess it depends on what room you're in, but in bright rooms, I prefer matte. In dark rooms, I prefer glossy because it looks pops a little bit better. Heb says, nice monitor. I still find that 1440p as the sweet spot, but the new LG monitors are looking fire. Uh, I haven't tested any of the new monitors. Those also potentially look like fire as well. Um, I agree with you. Uh, overall, Samsung Odyssey Neo G9 dual 4K monitor. It's a thumbs up from me, but also kind of like a cautionary go into the purchase knowing that you don't currently have the support to get the full refresh rate. And in that sense, to match current gen hardware, I think my primary recommendation, if you want an ultra wide, is literally gonna be the dual QHD monitor that's 240 hertz that I talked about at the beginning of the live stream. I think more people would benefit from that than the ultra high resolution. That said, if you wanna buy a one monitor and be good for a really long time, then going with this one is probably the better choice for future proofing because this one will grow with the next GPU series year after year for the next long time. Okay, so that's it for my review of the Samsung Odyssey Neo G9. I don't see any other questions. Checking chat one more time. Yeah, no more other questions. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you in the next live stream. Again, shout out and thank you to Best Buy. Links in the description if you want to pick up the Odyssey Neo G9. See you later. Brandon, out. He's out.